Hello everyone out there in YouTube land, my name is Will, this is Will of the Nerds, and we're back with another deck tech video, and we are back with another vampire deck, and this one I'm going to call, um, Vamp Ramp, because, uh, it's supposed to ramp, it, it, the description on my, on the box that I have is Vampire Ramp. I've had this deck made for a while, I don't think I've ever played it, so this is going to be a surprise to all of us here we're learning together so we're just gonna call it vamp ramp and casual as usual hit okay and we're gonna go straight in there is white in this I don't know how many planes we have it looks like maybe three or four there is three so we're gonna hit three enter we have some forests oops no not islands we have some forests not forest swamps in here we have three of them we're gonna hit enter we have three mountains also so that leaves us with nine and we have uh four forsaken sanctuaries so let's type that in sanctuary yep there we go one two three four it's definitely not that set um it looks like what do we have the most from? We have most from Shadows over Innistrad. So that's the one we're going to go with. Then we have a playset of Boros Guild Gates. So we're going to type that in. And see if we can... Oops. Nope. I had it and then I lost it. Backspace. Boros Guild Mage. Okay. That's some art i guess and what do we have here it's just the returned or not return or ravnica the that it's not it's not even that is it yeah it's that symbol yeah that that works i have a couple of those i can see and we have three rakdos guild gates so let's type that in Rakdos Guildgate, one, two, three. They are also from the Ravnica Allegiance things. Um, no, I only have one of those ones. So we're going to go with that one because I have that's what I have the most of. And we have a couple Bloodfell Caves for just two of. And they are from, a, what is this, Eternal Masters? eternal masters update there we go and that is all the land so that's 22 mana um maybe you might have to put a little more in here it, it always feels like there's more than um 60 cards in these decks but we'll we'll see here so we're gonna get in the white ones are what's on top there are no white creatures they are just spells so repel the abominable for a two of one two prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by non-human sources um chances are most of the creatures are going to be human so it's just basically a prevent it's like a fog pretty much and next we have dis enchant uh, yep i spelled it right okay Started spelling it right after that. Probably don't know. And these are from Conspiracy. It destroys target artifact or enchantment. Um, it's just a little protection in here. This is probably the one card that you can live without in this deck. Or put it in a sideboard. You know, it's it's one that you don't necessarily need. Okay, next we're getting into some black spells. My favorite black spell is, of course, Murder. And we have two of those and these are from m19 so let's go change that corset 19 update and next we have patron of the vein which is a commander card so it might not be legal but a lot of the stuff i do is um casual kitchen play so it doesn't really matter as long as it's not going to be extremely overpowered i really do, try not to throw a bunch of commander cards in a deck um usually one to two if i find a card i like 
because uh, usually there's a lot going on and too much to try to keep track of. But anyway, Patron of the Vein, flying when it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. So it's basically another murder. Whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, exile it and put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire you control. So I, you can see where the vamp ramp, the ramp engines coming from, is uh, mainly starting with Patron of the Vein. And it's not legendary, so you might be able to throw a couple more in there depending on what cards you have in here that you might want to get rid of. Next is Yeheni Undying Partisan. Oh, I didn't know that was uh, another... He had uh, an, another card. I actually think I had these, but I might have gotten rid of it. But we have two of them. It has haste. A black card with haste. That's very rare. Whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Yeheni Undying Partisan. Sacrifice another creature. It gains indestructible to end of turn. Um, you really don't have to worry about the indestructible thing. I guess that's just if you want to end the game kind of thing. And uh, make sure he doesn't die. But you have a lot of ways. Uh, Patron of the Vein is destroying creatures um, when it enters. And it's getting bigger. You have murder that's going to make Yeheni bigger. Just uh, normal combat in general is going to make it bigger. And if you're playing multiplayer, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies. So you don't even have to kill it. So if you're playing multiplayer, he could get bigger just from sitting there, not doing anything. Next is Blood Lord of Vazgoth. All right, which we have two up here. Blood Thirst 3. If an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Okay, so it's something to play after combat, basically. It has flying, which is nice. Because we need creatures with flying. Whenever you cast a vampire creature spell, it gains Bloodthirst 3. Well, uh, I don't remember that. I really need to play this deck. It seems like it could get very out of control very quickly. Um, it might need a little updating. I know there's some white vampires that might be better off in here. But uh, I don't know if I have any other white cards in here. I do have some white vampires in here. Okay. So next we go to... Um, some multicolored stuff. So I'm just going to grab all the multicolored creatures here because I don't know how I got with all this order here. Um, so, I mean, you might be able to change it with some of the white spells in there, but they're not bad, uh, especially Repel the Abominable. It's kind of weird that it's in a vampire deck, but they also, the vampires did, I think some of them did help against the Eldrazi. All right. Next, Legion Lieutenant. I really just need to make go through my vampire decks and be like, okay, this is definitely like um, L E G I O N L I E. Why is nothing coming up? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> There he is. We have two of. Uh, I just need to go through my vampire decks and just find the staple vampire cards from each deck and be like, all right, that's a staple vampire card. That's a staple vampire card. Just make a deck. Um, other vampires you control get a plus one, plus one. So there's more ramp for your vampires to make them uh, more bloodthirsty, I guess. I don't know if that would, that's the right word, but that's what I'm going with. Next, we have Strom Kirk. Oops. Stromkirk Captain for a two of. Um, he is from the different set. I don't remember what that symbol is. is it? Oh, I know what that symbol is, and I can't remember what it is. First Strike. Other vampires you, you control get a plus one, plus one, and have First Strike. So that is nice. That's another ramp card. Also giving... Oh, Dark Ascension. It's also giving them... Uh, First Strike, which makes them even more of a threat. Next is Edgar Markov, which is, I believe this is Soren Markov's father. And we have two of. Eminence, whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone 
or on the battlefield create a one okay so this first part completely moot does not matter no point having it um what you really need to care about in this is the first strike with haste and whenever markov edgar markov attacks put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control so the the eminence thing is completely moot in the format that we play so it's usually what what i do as if if i have a commander card in it and it has like lieutenant or like in the command zone stuff like that you just ignore that part you're obviously not going to use it if you're playing like standard or counter not like kitchen magic yeah so just ignore eminence you're gonna the other two things is what you want first strike haste it's giving a plus one plus one to each vampire you control whenever he attacks and that's including him so there's some more rampage for your vampires okay so next we have some more black cards so we're just going to go through them we're actually going to do the white ones next because i don't think any of the white ones have rares but the black ones do okay so white cards here apparently we still have 20 cards left i feel like i have more than that in this forerunner of the legion oops not of thy legion of the legion there we go uh when it enters the battlefield you may search your library for a vampire card reveal it uh then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it whenever a vampire enters the battlefield under your control target creature gets a plus one plus one to end of turn so you could just i mean whenever you go to attack if you have a big vampire you can just add another plus one plus one to end of turn but um, it's in there to help you search for your your big vampires you want your rare vampires that you want uh, blood lord edgar uh, patron of the vein who is the other one we hear i mean stromkirk captain yeheni uh, basically basically any of them would work right now they're all just kind of really strong now that i go over it and next we have sanguine glorifier sanguine bond i like that card that's a good card all right two of these uh when it enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on another target vampire you control again just a little ramp for your vampires it's this isn't the strongest card but it's nice you might i mean you could say you could switch this out with another forerunner of the legion like another two of them probably wouldn't hurt okay so next we have some red vampires we have rakish air so let's do that we have two of these whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player put a plus one plus one counter on it these are not the commander version these are the innistrad versions so let's update that so that is nice again more ramp it's only three mana um so basically that makes all of your vampires threatening because if they're going to do any damage they're just going to buff and get bigger next we have is blood made vampire blood mad vampire my apologies for a two of whenever uh this deals combat damage to a player put a plus one plus one counter on it it has madness so you can uh what if you discard this card discard it in exile when you do uh you can cast it for its madness cost so you don't have to play it right away so maybe you only have three or two mana available you can just discard it I might you might need a discard ability to discard a card i don't think you can just discard just a discard i'm not sure how that works next we have haven oops haven gall vampire for a two of and these are avison yeah avison restored two of okay when it deals combat damage to a player put a plus one plus one counter on it when another creature dies put a plus one plus one counter on it so again it doesn't matter what creature dies as long as a creature dies it's gonna get big <clears throat> i i need to play this card i need to play this deck like i really need to play this deck i don't think i've played this deck at all i need to play it because i feel like this can get out of control very quickly um it might be better to throw a couple more mana in here maybe maybe take disenchant out both of the disenchants out and throw uh maybe two more bloodfell caves in here 
in all honesty. All right, so I'm going to save these rare ones for last. We have Sangir Vampire, which <clears throat> is... This is, what, the, the OG vampire. Old vampire dude. Uh, this one is from... The ones I have are from 10th edition. Yep, yeah, yep, they're from 10th edition. Jesus. Flying. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Sangir Vampire this turn dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, the chances of... I, I mean, you're ramping, so this Sangir Vampire just kind of works in this deck because if you're ramping and all of your vampires are getting big, he's going to get big, and chances of him actually killing something and being worth something is... I mean, it's it's worth it at this point. All right, so we have eight cards left. Let's make sure that's all I have. That is all I have. All right, so next we have Stromkirk Patrol. Like, it's, it's the thing. Like, There's just so many... good cards that I have to I have to put more than just one in here. All right. I have to put two ofs just to get the cards I want in these decks. Uh, this is from Innistrad. So before we update, whenever this deals damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So again, they're going to get big. It's going to be a threat just like every other one. It's You're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. You might not put a plus one, plus one counter on it because the threat of it doing damage will make it bigger and people have to keep an eye on it all right on to the next is drana nope drana calastria blood chief and they are from that set i believe i have one of these i don't think she's in this deck and i do have a couple of these ones. I don't think I kept her, though. Hell, he can probably just make a Drana deck. <laughs> Why not? Just all the different Dranas. Anyway, uh, she has flying, which is good. We need the flying. Uh, the next couple... Uh, the next one after this has flying, too. But uh, she has X, two, sw two swamps. Target creature gets a minus zero, minus X until end of turn. And Drana gets uh, plus X plus zero until end of turn. So that's nice. You're killing creatures. So if you're killing creatures, patron of the vein is going to get stronger, right? Um, well, there's another card in here that when a creature dies, it gets stronger too. Okay. So rackish air is going to get big patron of the vein is going to get big and she's going to get big till the end of turn. But you're also going to kill a creature, which also helps get rid of those bigger threats if you have the extra mana to put into it. Which, if you have like seven mana laying around, that's five damage. That's probably going to get rid of most big threats. Um, the only thing that's not really in here is Death Touch that can make this better. Just give all your stuff Death Touch, then it's really threatening. But uh, I'm pretty sure I can find a a black enchantment or something to give them death touch. All right, next we have Kazarov Sangir Pure Blood, which I forgot about this card. Um, it's flying. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. If you pay three and a red, it deals two damage to target creature. So, I mean, two damage might not kill it, but it's pinging it. That's a good way to get just chump blockers out of the way. So if you have the mana to kill a couple chump blockers with everything you have out, that's that's good. Might as well do it. All right, and this one I have from two different sets. So Captivating, and this is the last vampire we have. Captivating Vampire, not Captivating Crew. Captivating Vampire, one is from this commander set, but we are going to change him because he is from M11, and he is a foil. So we're going to update. And then we have that one from that one from the commander set. Other vampire creatures 
You control, get a plus one, plus one. So there's more plus one, plus ones. Tap five untapped vampires you control, gain control of target creature. It becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. So this will probably go good in um, just like token decks, a token vampire deck. But if you have just the vampires around to tap, you might as well tap them and get control of like the big beady creature that your opponent has and attack them with it. And hopefully things work out and a bunch of stuff dies and then your other creatures get bigger and then you still have, um, you gain control of it. And it's not till the end of turn. So you gain control of it. It becomes a vampire. It is part of your thrall. And uh, then you have that big threat on board too. So we're going to save. I'm going to have to leave this deck out. I might actually just play my vampire net decks next time everybody comes over. So we have 32 creatures, 6 instants, 22 lands. Let's look at the details. Uh, 34, 31, and 34. Most of this is black. But I think most of my split lands have red in them. Um... I think I have a couple white, so we'll have to see. I think it might actually work out. Uh, let's look at this. Um, so there's like $3 worth of lands there. Not going to worry about that. What's the most expensive card? Edgar Markov, really? For two of them is 150 There's $75 a piece. Wow. I would have never guessed that. I'm glad I bought two of those fucking... Um, Commander decks when I did. Jesus. Next expensive card is Patron of the Vein at $11 a piece. And this is the first expensive deck I've had in a while. $224 for this deck. So basically $220. Bucks, subtracting all the lands. Because usually if you go anywhere, they're not going to charge you for lands. They might charge you for, like, these. But if you go and buy, like, Edgar Markov... They'll probably give you the lands for free. They'll be like, yeah, you're spending like $200, the lands or whatever. Because they'll get lands all the time. Um, so, yeah, $224. That's the most expensive deck we've seen in a while. So, there's that. Let's look at the starting hand. That is not bad, but we're going to mulligan. That's worse, but uh, what if we mulligan? Mulligan again. I guess we're going to stick with this. Play Forsaken Sanctuary. Hope you get a card. Play that. Hope you get another land. Okay, you got Boros Guildgate, so you can play Stromkirk Captain next turn. Or you can play this dude. Um, okay, so you can play this. I would play... Yeah, you can play Stromkirk Captain. Add another card. Um, this is probably where I'd play this. Whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one. And he now has, he's now a 3-3. Three, three. He has first strike, and this has first strike. I'd attack with Stromkirk Captain, see what happens. Um, he's going to have first strike, so he's going to deal damage first. So, chances are he's going to kill something, or he's going to do two damage. And if he deals two damage to a player, this thing's going to get bigger. So they're probably going to block just to keep this thing from getting bigger. All right, so we have one, two, three, four mana. Um, I'm probably playing murder, destroy their big creature, and then attack with what you can. Uh, hopefully at that point, your things are getting bigger, and now you're starting to get some mana. That's one, two, three, four. That's five mana. You can't do anything this turn because it's tapped. Um, you could probably prevent damage. That would probably be the smart thing to do if they attack. I, I would kind of hold it to wait and see. If they attack with something big or they do an all-out assault on you to just try to get you dead. Um, so my, my that would be my strategy. I would honestly do that, prevent all damage tap. I would honestly get rid of Disenchant for two, repel the, two more of these, get a place out of them. Um, okay, so we don't have enough mana to really do any of that yet. So there we go. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's six. We need one more for this guy. Um, I'm still swinging, uh, seeing what I can do, if I can do some damage. 
this helps play him whenever uh, this deals damage to a player. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When another creature dies, he gets a plus one, plus one. So if you're playing multiplayer, this thing's probably going to get big quick. Hopefully it does. It's a 3-3 three, three coming out because of Stromkirk Captain. You got to try to keep these things alive the best you can. Um, that's not always going to happen. Now you can play this. Um, it'll do two damage if you have it, but whenever a creature opponent controls uh, is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on him, and like it's damage from anywhere too, which is nice. So now you have two creatures on the field that no matter what happens, even if a creature doesn't die, he's going to get buff. He's going to get big. And if a creature dies, he's going to get big. So you're going to probably become the biggest threat on a board, but if you have Repel the Abominable, if somebody goes to attack, you can play it. And now you can just have an all-out assault. And, like, that's five right there. If you do an all-out assault, um, that's eight... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage straight to them if they attacked with everything. And that's not counting if these things went up. Because that, that might be, depending on how many things died or how much damage was done, like that could be 13, 14, it could be, I, I doubt it would be 20, but it would probably be 13 to probably 16 to 17 damage. And there's another land, which I don't want to look at, but that will do it for this one. So I'll uh, look at the probabilities real quick. If you guys could please like, subscribe, share, hit that bell icon. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. You can follow me over on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next one.